Detroit Den 313, welcome back. Steve here, flying solo, unfortunately. We've had to take a couple days off. You know, there's been some hectic stuff going on in, my, in the lives of Steve and Will. Apologize for that. We are trying to get back to hammering out an episode every single day, maybe two episodes if we like something and we want to talk about it. But I think we took like three days off. Just because we have had some time off does not mean I have not been thinking or dying to talk some Detroit Lions football. So before I get into it, hit that de- subscribe button, hit the like button, leave some comments on this episode, let us know how you're feeling about it. What's been on my mind the last couple of days? Nothing short of a Super Bowl in Detroit. It's pretty much all I think about that and like hitting the lottery. Those are like the two things that are pretty much on my mind 24-7. Detroit Lions winning a Super Bowl hitting the lottery and never having to work ever again in my life. And I could just talk Detroit Lions football. Kind of go hand in hand. Um, I think there's three important areas we have to talk about if we're going to have a Super Bowl party here in Detroit um, coming up this winter. First and foremost, before I get into what those three things are, um, last season was the best season we've had in the city of Detroit ever. Um, I'm speaking for myself here. If if you're an old timer and you were here in 57, the last time the Detroit Lions won a championship, not a Super Bowl, uh, much respect to you. But, you know, um, for me personally, seeing the Lions go to the NFC championship game and unfortunately having to watch that game on TV, man, I wanted that game at home so bad. I had plans made. I had some Super Bowl plans made, but it was a phenomenal season. I had a blast. Me and my wife, season ticket holders, uh, we go up to every game with some friends. We tailgate. We have a good time. Um, and it makes it that much more of a fun time when the Detroit Lions are winning. Obviously, you don't want to go up there and watch the Lions lose. Those days are done. SOL, dead in our opinion. SOL is officially buried in the grave. RIP, it's over. But just because the Lions had a good season last year, you're not guaranteed to get back to where you were. Um, There's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of uh, things going our way. You can't just show up, flip a coin, win the coin toss and that be it. You got to go out there and play football. You got to execute on paper. The Detroit lions match up well with absolutely anyone. Um, Nobody in this NFL scares me anymore. When I see the lions playing, I know we have a better chance than not of getting a win. But like I said, just because you show up on game day does not guarantee you a win. You still have to show up and execute. That's going to come down to coaching. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, Three big things I think are, the reasons why the Detroit Lions can win a Super Bowl. Here's the path. Number one, and this is a no order. This is not a ranking show. I know you guys kind of sometimes see like me talking about certain things and you think that I'm ranking them order. This is a no order, but I think the most important thing we have to talk about, you can't mention the word Super Bowl, Detroit Lions. You can't talk about Jared Goff. Question, is Jared Goff the guy to win a Super Bowl? I think it's yes. The Lions committed to him. They gave him the contract he wanted. He's a quarterback for at least the next three years, fourth-year option. Um, I think he can get it done. Now, he's been there with the Rams. He was there once. He was came damn close last year. You're getting close. That tells me you can, you can win big games. When all the eyes are on you, when all the pressure's on, you can win big games. He might not have won the big game yet, but – I think he, I really think, I truly believe he can get the job done. He has all the weapons around him. A quarterback like Jared Goff, um, this isn't a knock. I think it's just the way, the, the way it is. You know, he's not an elite, elite, elite playmaker of a quarterback. He's elite at a lot of things, but when you want to talk about who's the best of the best, it's Pat, Patrick Mahomes. Jared Goff is nowhere near that. But the supporting cast around Jared Goff is probably, in my opinion, the best in the NFL. Name me a quarterback who has the top offensive line, a top five wide receiver, uh, the best running back duo in the NFL, and a young up-and-coming tight end who's being talked about as being tight end win, tight end one in like fantasy football categories, which I don't really care about, but Sam Laporta. Find me a quarterback who has half of those. Jared Goff has all of them. Best offensive line, best running back duo, Sam Laporta, one of the best tight ends in the NFL, and Amon St. Brown, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Find me a, a team who's set up better, who has their quarterback in a better position to win. Again, got to show up, got to execute. There were some games last year in 2023 that I think Jared Goff could have cleaned up. If we want to, I don't really want to go back down, you know, old memories, but if we win that Chicago game or the Thanksgiving game against Green Bay, maybe we're talking the NFC Championship game is in Detroit, but we're past that. Play a complete season, Jared, 17 games. Let's have all paths 
lead to the Super Bowl having to come through Detroit in the NFC. Let's have three, maybe just two. Maybe we get a first round bye, but at least two home playoff games in Detroit and the second one being an NFC championship game. Um, those little things matter. And just real quick, this is off topic. It's not Lions related. Um, I was on Twitter. This was a few weeks ago. And uh, I saw someone ask Lamar Jackson how he felt about going up against the Kansas City Chiefs uh, if that game was vitally important. And he kind of downplayed it, and, and I'm paraphrasing, saying, uh, you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's one game. You know, it's not that big of a deal. Games against the Chiefs for the Ravens are going to impact seeding. So as a Detroit Lions fan, you've got to win every single game that you possibly can. You don't want to leave anything um, – in the judge's hands, as they say, in like fighting, you want all paths. You want to have control. You want people coming to Detroit. We saw what that environment was with um, the Rams coming to town and the Buccaneers. You get us one more game here. If the, if that NFC championship game last year is played in Detroit, 100%, I believe the Detroit Lions win. Every single game matters. That's what I'm saying. Like the, that Chicago game, the Thanksgiving game against um, Green Bay, that shit matters. It, it, like We don't want to look back at it. And I'm not blaming golf. There's a lot of things that went wrong in both of those games. I'm just saying, if we clean up all that little stuff and we play perfect, as perfect as we can type football, this team will be in the Super Bowl. Second thing I got to talk about, second thing that gets us to a Super Bowl is this Detroit Lions defense. On paper, our defense looks absolutely nasty. Our defense looks like it could be uh, like, like a top seven defense, which is more than good enough to get you there. More than good enough to get you to Super Bowl if you're in the top seven in a lot of categories. Like I said, that's on paper. You still got to execute. Aaron Glenn, we still have some questions. I've backed off a little bit. I like some things I saw toward the end of the season. Um, we started out giving up like 30 points per game at one point in the year. We got that down to 23. Still not great, but it was an improvement. We had a young defense. We had a lot of pieces missing, uh, especially in the secondary. We had um, C.J. Gardner-Johnson go down. Um Cam Sutton was kind of sketchy toward the end of the year. Emmanuel Mosley didn't play. Like we, we were missing some guys in our secondary and we were picking up practice squad players. No offense, Kendall Vildor, but it wasn't a recipe for success, success when you're taking players off of another team's practice squad and saying, Hey, come play in the NFC championship game. We addressed it on paper. It looks phenomenal. We have to see how it translates, man. I'm excited for DJ reader. I think that's something I could just lock in right now and say, that's going to be a good signing. I have no doubts about that one. And I don't have doubts about our rookies. I'm just saying it's going to take some time. There's going to be some learning curves. You're not just, it's really real. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's really, really hard to just show up from college, come to the NFL, lock down these receivers in a league where you can't touch anyone. You can't put your hands on anybody. Uh, there's a lot of rules that favor offensive players. So to come in into the league as a defensive back, like Terry on Arnold and Ennis Rakestraw, um, it's hard to be a sauce gardener. That's what made him so special a couple years ago as rookie of the year. Um, it's hard to do. There's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some, ah, damn it, type of moments. Like it, It's just going to happen. So if our defense on paper, if it's as good on the field as it is on the, on the sheet, we're going to be just fine. Um, last thing, again, no order, is our coaching. I've been – only critical about Dan Campbell in that NFC championship game where I was saying, I think he should have took some field goals. I think he should have taken some points when they were there. Um, when San Francisco kind of had us on our toes, I think we could have slowed the, the floods down a little bit by kicking some field goals. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of things that went wrong in that game. But Jameer Gibbs, his first lost fumble, um, Reynolds dropping a couple passes, um, dropping some interceptions by Vildor and Sutton. Miss tackling. It's not just one thing that added up. And I keep bringing up this NFC championship game for a reason, because we're talking a Super Bowl. We have to be better at coaching. We have to be better, especially in the third quarter of games. Um, I threw out a sheet, a, a stat a while ago. I can't remember what it was, but the Detroit Lions only averaged like I, I think it was four points throughout the season in, in the third quarter and scoring like it's not good. I believe there was three or four games where we were completely shut out in the third quarter. That's not good. We got to get better at a lot of areas, guys. Like I, I'm not, I'm not panicking. I'm not worried. Um, I think that this Detroit Lions team, starting in 2024, 2025, we deserve to be mentioned in the Super Bowl for for a change. Like it's been a long time, if ever, we've been able to say, "Hey, the season's starting. Who's your Who's your team that you think's going to go to the Super Bowl?" 
if you're a fan of another team and people are talking about the Detroit Lions, finally, like we're getting some recognition. There's a reason we have five primetime games. Like people want to see the Detroit Lions play big games during the season. Let's play the big game at the end of the season. Those are three things I think it's going to come down to, guys. It's going to come down to Jared Goff, how good of an improvement on this defense we're going to have, and we need to clean up a little bit of coaching stuff. Leave it in the comments down below. Let me know how you feel. Again, hit that like button, stick around, subscribe. We'll be back later with another show.